Hello everyone, welcome to Moving Vlog 6. Brought in all this stuff that you see before you hear I've got. This box has got architrave switches in it. <clears throat> these are just um, these plug socket bases. I've got, there's only three left in this box and then this is a full case. I don't even know what's in here, but it was just one that was ready to be picked up and moved over. So I thought I'd put it in the car. I also brought over some cable. This isn't much. And then these are cable clips. Again, Dita. I also brought over these two fluorescent lights. These are Associated Lighting Industries. As you can see, this back room isn't quite as well lit as the front room um, because it's just the Clipsal's light kit, but we're about to change that. I'm, it's gonna be a lot of time-lapsing. I'm sorry that the last two videos have been a lot of time-lapsing. This one's gonna be a lot of time-lapsing as well. So let's set up the camera. The first thing I wanna do with these, they only have a male plug on them at the moment. So I've got a bunch of like female ends from extension leads. I think they're in this box. I don't know, I'll find them. They're around somewhere. Um, but I wanna put the female ends on them as well so then I can plug stuff in after the fact. I've been buzzing away out here. Um, I've done so much and I just haven't been checking in, which the first thing I did was I swapped out the pure light fluorescent light with this and it didn't actually work the first time I put it, turned it on. I didn't time-lapse fixing it because I didn't know how long it was gonna take, but it was just a wire had come out of this tombstone. So I just pushed it back in, put it back together and it works fine. I got this one in the little storage area hung. I'm probably gonna shuffle this fluorescent light over towards the roller door a bit more. I moved the eye high bay because it kind of, the place where it was at um, kind of wasn't making much sense anymore. Um, so it's there now, which is kind of trying to be central with this front room. Um, I put female ends on both of these fluorescent lights, like, cause it's the center of the shed. This is where a lot of the extension leads are running to. And coming back here, as you can see, I put up the pier light fluorescent light and I changed the tube in it. I've got a bunch of these Sylvania Luxline Plus daylight fluorescent tubes. Uh, so I brought some of them over. They're pretty much all of them are nearly um, finished though. Like pretty much they're all nearly burned out. So I'm just using them up and then I'll get rid of them. I do need to get some more daylight fluorescent tubes though. And then I did run the cable for the controller for the GEC. It runs up and then you can see that I thought the um, plug bases were gonna fit in the C channel, but they don't. So I just had to cable tie it onto the front of it there. But what I think it's time to do now is run to the hardware store and grab some mounting blocks and a texter. Let's try and get this GEC running. Hello everyone, I am back from the software store and I bought, I bought three of these switch mounting blocks. I only need two, not even that, but I'm gonna to use two. I only need two, so I bought three. I also bought some of these and what these are on the side like this, or you can put them on the front if you want, but I'm probably gonna do the side. And then you put a switch on them, except it's like you put this on and then the, like whatever you're lining the wall with, whether it be jet rock or ply, that goes on first. And then you cut out this hole and then you put the switch on. 
Um, so I got two of them. Probably gonna, actually definitely gonna need more. I also got some white cable ties. Forgot to get a marker, I just remembered that. I think I'm ready to take down these temporary floodlights. This one back here didn't even really get used that much. There's just that one. That one there is the only one that's still on because I just haven't needed the plug from it yet. This one, um, the fans plugged into, and then the one over here I actually took down. I think you might have, I think you might have seen that in the time lapse, but I took it down because I needed the eye bolts. Because I don't know if you realize, but I actually used eye bolts on the top of these fluorescent lights because the chains didn't just hook into them like they did on this one, as you can see. Yeah, oh, that's another thing I need to do as well. These fans need constant power and the fluorescent lights don't, so I'd like to get these separately switched. I brought over switched power board. This is the only one I have. This one is the eye lighting high bay, and this is just everything. Let's just hit the time lapse and I'm gonna start with this. about to go ahead and put the controller on for this ceiling fan. Nice, I've actually left the controller at home. I, I, I got the box of controllers out and I left them there. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back and get them, which is fine because I'm getting a bit hungry anyway. I wanna go home and get something to eat. And then when I come back, we'll put this controller on. Then I wanna put a twin light switch on. I'm gonna go home and get those things and eat and I'll be back soon for more. I'm back. I didn't even film anything at the old place. I've got... Um, this box of controllers, this is the one that I need. This is for the GEC, it's original to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on there now. And then one of these boxes that I've already brought over, I'm sure will have a um, complete twin light switch that I can put on this one. For This is the moment of truth, really. Everything is uh, wired up, fitted off, connected. I've got the two switches here. Um, I just hit my head on the light. As you can see, I plugged this light into that socket. Over here, I plugged the storage kind of area, fluorescent, into that 413. And then, the so all I need to do now is flick the switch and see if anything blows up. So here we go. Well, that's a good start. Let's try the top switch first, and it should be, if I've wired it correctly, it should be the it's this single storage fluoro. And it is. The bottom switch should be this peer light. Nice. And then the GEC. Oh, and it's spinning backwards. But it works. So that's the first bit of switching done. So what I'm gonna do now, take down all these temporary floodlights and rejig all these extension cords. This is what I did. This is coming in from the sight pole and all the big extension leads and it comes in here. I've got a piggyback one that's feeding all the constantly fed stuff such as those switches and the two ceiling fans that are on remote kits. And then it also piggybacking off that because piggyback leads are the best comes my power strip. I've got this all like, I'm gonna tie this on better, but like this is all tied in so it's not gonna fall off. This is just these two fluorescent lights, that one and then the pendant one above the bench. Uh, and then this is the eye high bay and it all goes in there. There was a bit of extra length on pretty much all of them. So it's all just looped and sitting in there for now. Come up and go, I need to push that one up finally, but there's the one that goes to the high bay. This is the constantly fed one, because you can tell because of the one with the switch. And then there's two leads, one runs off to that fan and then one runs off to that fan and then that floodlight, which I'm about to take down. So it'll just be the fan on that end. And then from doing that, I'll gain another two meter extension lead because I need one more two meter extension lead for this fluorescent light because it's just going up there at the moment. I want to have it nice and tidy. I hung up the second, I've got two of these pier light ones now. This one I got from a winery. It had been installed in the warehouse on the wall 
don't really know why and it wasn't switched it was just constantly fed and the bulbs had gone bad a long time ago so when i turn these on they just do that that one sometimes lights up for a few minutes but then they just go out so i'm gonna need to change the bulbs in that it when it's hot it just glows at the ends, it doesn't flicker like this. That, and it was like that in the winery for years. And the ballasts are fine. I've run new tubes in it before. I'm pretty sure the starters are good too, somehow. So I'm gonna fix that now and then get this extension lead. But first, I want to take down all these floodlights. These two, I've already taken down the middle one and then this back one, because I don't need any of them anymore. So I'll take these down now. tubes in this well not new there's some more of those sylvanias and they're very very heavily used as you can see this one here is completely purple when you first turn it on then when it warms up it goes to the normal color and then in this fixture it only has one of those sylvanias from that skip but the other bulb is a sylvania as well that i actually got from my old high school um and i mean look how bright it is in here that's what it was before just with the clipsal's light kit and then if i turn the clipsal off that's what it was before. Turn on these fluorescent lights. They give a, give off a bunch of extra light. I'm actually thinking I've got, got this. And what this is, this is a twin Peerlite two foot fluorescent fixture. The same age as them, but I replaced the end caps with some of a four foot fixture that I don't have anymore. This one was originally diffused as well, but I don't have the diffuser or the end caps. This is the ballast plate for it here. I might put it up there going this way. Let me know what you think on that. I might, I probably will do it, and honestly, knowing me. Over here, uh, you can see I put a different tube in, the, in this fixture. This, this is actually one of the tubes that came in it. It's a Hitachi, which is a company that I've seen making excavators. And then the other bulb was a GE Daylight bulb um, that I will put back in here as well, but it's at the old place at the moment. I would like to find a place to hang this. Um, but I'm not too sure yet. Actually, these two highway boxes came out of the same place as that, fun fact. I brought these over, these are the F clamps that I was talking about. Actually, I don't know if I was talking about to you, I was talking about these to someone. These are F clamps that I can use permanently out here. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is clamp these pieces of wood to the um, shed with those clamps and then move this bench up to it. So they'll be behind the bench, move the bench up to it and bolt the bench to those pieces of wood so that it's basically bolted to the wall and it won't go anywhere. So I just had a quick bite to eat and what I wanna do now is um, move this workbench out so I can get these timbers in behind it. I'm gonna go ahead and um, start taking all of that Colourmon stuff out and then the rest of this stuff is just gonna probably find its way onto these shelves um, for the time being, so let's do this. Where's the ones? Yeah, these ones. 
hooks. Can't never have enough hooks in their cheek. So I'm actually laughing at myself because I've just spent about 20 minutes trying to fit this stupid shelving unit in the car. The curb on that side, so I couldn't wheel the trolley out because this thing's super heavy. It's, I don't even know what, how, 40 to 60 kilograms. It's somewhere between there. So I had to lug this thing off the trolley from that side in the car. As you can see, it's touching the back window. It's up against this and it's almost up against that. <laughs> <laughs> this was a stupid idea. I should have come with the bigger car that we used to get my workbench. But, um, you know, it's in here now. I don't know how I'm going to get it out on my own. Because <laughs> it's so heavy, I couldn't actually lift it in the car. I had to, like, have half of it in the car and half on the trolley and kind of doing it that way. Um, but it's in here now. So getting it out is going to be the tricky part. What I think I may actually end up doing is opening it up in here and taking the pieces out and bringing the pieces up to the shed and then putting it together in the shed instead of taking it up as one thing into the shed because this thing is so heavy. Anyway, it's in the car now. Let's get it back home. Back at the new place now. There's the shed. Um, we need to get this out of the car and um, it's really heavy. I struggled to get it in. I don't know. It doesn't say on it how heavy it is, but I think it was between like 40 and 60 kilograms. So what I think I'm actually going to do is open the box in the car and take the pieces out of the box and up to the shed one at a time or two at a time. However many I can carry. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got it all up here. All these pieces I brought up um, like about five at a time. That was just a handful. Um, and then this I brought up as this. Um, barely was strong enough, but I got it up here. Um, so all the pieces are up here, so let's start the time lapse and get this together. getting a bit hard to film because I had um, a bunch of people like one of the other I had some friends and family visit um, and then I left um, and now my phone's actually nearly flat but shelving unit put together as you can see it's a lot bigger than the other ones and obviously it's wire this is mainly going to be used for storing ceiling fan motors I can hang them from the underside of the shelves I've got more than enough room for storing fans so I'm actually going to start stacking some of this stuff on that but that'll probably happen tomorrow because i've got a couple things i want to do now as you can see right here i hung this as well i didn't do this on video um this is i don't even know if you've ever seen this light before this is a 18 watt associated lighting cadet as you can see it's one of the it's got twist sockets in it um you can tell because there's a slot here um and i think this bulb might be original it's an aussie made thorn as you can see and it's the starter matches it as well it's a thorn starter I put a cord on it and the chains and uh, I was going to hang at the same height as that but then I had to wrap the chains around the beam instead of hanging them from the screws so it hangs a bit higher but that's fine because it's a bit smaller it's just plugged into the female end from this light so they're on together with the uh, one above the workbench just switched from the power board as you can see um, back here obviously got kind of an aisle now that we can walk down for the storage and the fluorescent light in the storage. So that's very nice. In the back room here, um, there is something else I want to do. And do that, and I'll be back. I'm not going to time lapse it because I don't have much battery. And there's probably plenty of time lapse in this video now. This is what I wanted to do. Put up the um, twin Peerlite 18 watt fixture in the back. 
Um, this is one of those things that it isn't needed at all, but I wanted to do it because it's me and I like lights, just like this little thorn over here. Those, these ones are just hanging on hooks, as you can see. Oh, that's the light, don't need that. Fan still spins and it misses that by quite a way, so that's cool. Um, and they've all got daylight bulbs in them, so it's a nice color of light. I was just about to leave when I realized I haven't filmed this ending segment yet. I've gotten quite a bit done today. I've gotten this shelving unit um, put together, and as you can see, I've already stacked stuff on top. This box has oyster lights in it, and I plan to probably get a second box or just stack more oyster lights on top of it. The iHi Bay needs to move over again. It's kind of starting to get to the point where I'm thinking about actually taking it down because I'm not using it very often and it's I'm rapidly running out of ceiling space. Obviously it will, but yeah, I'm just starting to think about taking it down. Found a, finally found a place to put on my two foot fluorescent lights. I'm just stacking them up in here. I've got quite a few more to come over still, um, but there's plenty of, plenty more room there for more. Here's the Davis Bianca. Um, low bay fixture as you can see i've got oki straps around it because it's sitting on its side just for efficient use of space and i was a bit worried it was going to tip over so hopefully i'm just i've just put those oki straps there kind of for peace of mind i put this uh diffuser from that wraparound fluorescent fixture just here for now obviously this isn't where it's going to stay but i'm just super worried about it getting broken i also stacked the exhaust fans down the bottom here inside here the little aisle thing that i've kind of created here um I, um, obviously this is where I actually put all the stuff in. The Bianca low bay came from the other side, but this floodlight and all the two foots came in this side. You can see the GEC ceiling fan is actually above all of this. It's kind of starting to become hard to see. It's a little bit buried in there, but it is there and it is still clear. And so my phone died after the end of that last clip. Um, and I didn't film, I forgot to film a, um, closing out segment the following morning but this is going to be the closing out segment here i really do hope you enjoyed this video look forward to moving vlog 7 which will be coming soon um and uh i thank you all for watching